Good morning. The reading is taken from Acts, chapter 7, reading verses 2 to 16. To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran after the death of his father. God sent him to this land where you are now living. He, he, gave, he, gave him, sorry, he gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set his foot on. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him in this way. For 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in the country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and ill-treated. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. God said, and afterwards they will come out of that country and worship me in this land, this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision, and Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob became the father of the 12 patriarchs. Because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph, they sold him as a slave into Egypt. But God was with him and, re and rescued him from all his troubles. He gave Joseph wisdom and enabled him to gain the goodwill of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So Pharaoh made him ruler over Egypt and all his palace. Then a famine struck all Egypt and Canaan, bringing great suffering, and our ancestors could not find food. When Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our forefathers on their first visit. On their second visit, Joseph told his brothers who he was, and Pharaoh learned about Joseph's family. After this, Joseph sent for his father Jacob and his whole family, 75 in all. Then Jacob went down to Egypt, where he and our ancestors died. Their bodies were brought back to Shechem and placed in the tomb that Abraham had brought from the sons of Hamor at Shechem for a certain sum of money. Good. Thank you, everyone, who has contributed in those uh, moments in our service today. So we're back to Joseph, and we're thinking today particularly of the bigger picture of salvation. I've got my headset, so I don't need this. It's been a great story, hasn't it, as we've been following through Joseph in the autumn, that story that's been recorded from Genesis uh, 37 right through to chapter 50. I'm sure you will know by now why the story of Joseph is so much more than a musical and, and how God has spoken into our lives as we have explored it, full of insights into life, into relationships, into success and failure, <coughs> excuse me, times of deep darkness and times when the light shines brightly. And most of all, a story that expresses the faithfulness and the goodness of God through it all. So I hope you've enjoyed the sermons where we've taken a particular topic that's arisen out of the life of Joseph and related them to our lives today. And just briefly this morning, we take a final look at the story of Joseph from the perspective of Stephen in the book of Acts. That may surprise you, but the story of Joseph is told again in the book of Acts. We move on at least 1,500 years from the time of Joseph, through the life of Jesus, and beyond that into the formative years of the early church. And here we meet Stephen, who is a follower of Jesus, who was arrested and brought before the high priest to explain why he was claiming that Jesus was the Messiah. And Stephen's response is absolutely fascinating. He goes right back into the Old Testament to identify the people to whom God had spoken clearly, but who then suffered rejection and disbelief from those around him. And he spoke about Abraham first and told a bit about Abraham's story. And then he came to Joseph 
and told a bit about Joseph's story. And all of that was in our reading just now that Chris brought to us. And then as the passage continues, Stephen went on to talk at great length about Moses. And then he briefly touched on Joshua and David and Solomon. By which time, those who were listening to Stephen were so enraged, they took up stones and literally stoned Stephen to death. Why were those words so controversial? Those words where Stephen was talking about people from so many years ago in the Old Testament story and how God had spoken to them and led them. Why was that creating so much controversy? Because with each character that Stephen spoke about, he explained how God was with them and how what they were doing was in anticipation of the greater work of Jesus Christ. And it was, of course, speaking about Jesus that was the problem as far as the authorities were concerned when they were listening to Stephen. And in Stephen's mind, the life of Joseph was of immense significance, not just in what it accomplished in the time when Joseph was living in Egypt with Pharaoh and so on, it was a hugely significant story at that time. But also in what it anticipated of the greater deliverance of sin and all the powers of darkness that comes to us today through Jesus Christ. And so I think it would be true to say that without Joseph, there would be no Jesus. Without Abraham, there would be no Jesus. Without Moses, there would be no Jesus because these Old Testament characters were part of the story. And Joseph was instrumental not just in sustaining the Egyptians through seven years of famine, but bringing his whole family back to Egypt so that they didn't fall into oblivion. And as a result of this, the family line that runs right through from Abraham, through Joseph, through Moses, right on to Jesus Christ, was able to continue. And Joseph was a key player in this whole story. He is central, therefore, to the bigger picture of salvation. And that's really what we're thinking about today. We're thinking more today about Jesus than we are about Joseph. But we acknowledge that Joseph was a key part in the story. Indeed, the parallels between Joseph and Jesus are striking. Here are just a few of them. Joseph was greatly loved by his earthly father, Jacob, who you remember gave him a special coat as a sign of his affection. Jesus was greatly loved by his heavenly father, who said at his baptism, this is my own dear son, with whom I am well pleased. Joseph was sold as a slave to the Midianites by his brothers for a small sum of money. Jesus was handed over to the authorities in Jerusalem with 30 pieces of silver. Joseph's coat was ripped off by his brothers in anger. Jesus was also stripped of his robe at the site of his crucifixion. Joseph was tempted, falsely accused, arrested for a crime that he never committed. Jesus was tempted in every way as we are, and yet he committed no sin. Joseph knew repeatedly that the hand of the Lord was with him, enabling him to serve those who were helpless. And Jesus said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Joseph saved his people with grain, physical food as nourishment in a time of famine, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Spiritual food for a time of spiritual hunger, such as is evident very much today. Joseph was not recognized by his brothers until he disclosed his true identity. And Jesus was not recognized as the Son of God by so many around him 
And even his close disciples didn't really understand who he was. Joseph achieved a remarkable reconciliation with his brothers. And Jesus cried to those who crucified him, Father, forgive. They don't know what they're doing. And later in the New Testament, we read the words that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. There are so many connections between the Joseph of the Old Testament and the Jesus of the New Testament. And Joseph had an important place in the bigger story of God's salvation for mankind. Not just in what he achieved in Egypt, but what he anticipated in the life of Jesus. But ultimately it was Jesus who accomplished what we need today in our discovery of new life, peace and hope. And as we come closer to Christmas and as we come this morning closer to communion, our focus is on the one person who really can and really will make a difference in your life today. Because actually there's a huge difference between Joseph and Jesus. Joseph died over 3,000 years ago in Egypt. And later his bones were taken to Shechem. It's, it's part of the story that... Uh, Chris read to us that was recorded in Stephen's speech in the book of Acts. And that city is today the city of Nablus in the Palestinian West Bank. And so you can go today and visit Joseph's tomb. Jesus died around 2,000 years ago. But his bones are nowhere to be seen. Because he rose again and because he is alive today. And in our Christmas worship, we're going to focus especially this year on that wonderful gift of Jesus whose gift is peace for the world. Glory to God in the highest, said the angels, and peace on earth amongst those with whom he is well pleased. So we want to focus on that message of Jesus bringing life, joy, peace and hope. He is the one who makes the difference today. Our reason for gathering this morning is to worship him and allow his spirit to challenge, to refresh, to restore our broken lives right now. So as we come towards the end of thinking about the Joseph of the Old Testament, in addition to everything that that story has told us about life, about relationships, about failure, about success, about forgiveness and about reconciliation. It is also a story that is part of the bigger story and takes us to Jesus. And in Jesus, today, we have life, joy, peace and hope. Now, I don't know about you, but actually for me, just at this moment in time, I need to hear this. Life is just a bit complicated at the moment for so many different reasons. There's an awful lot going on. It's quite an unsettling time. So I need to hear that actually Jesus comes to make a difference for me now in bringing his life, joy, peace and hope. And Christmas will be special as we focus upon Jesus and really understand that gift of peace on earth and the huge difference that he makes. There is, of course, one more link between the Joseph of the Old Testament and the life of Jesus, especially as we come to Christmas. And that, of course, was another Joseph, Joseph to whom an angel of the Lord appeared and spoke, saying in a dream, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived within her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. That Joseph who was engaged to Mary was also a key part of God's divine plan of salvation. Traditionally, he was known as a carpenter. And this comes from just one verse in the Bible where Jesus is described as the carpenter's son. And in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 33, in a later part just after the story of, uh, of the birth of Jesus and so on, Joseph 
is described along with Mary as the child's father and mother. We know that Jesus was the Son of God, born of the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, Joseph had an important role in the big story. And he is also one who had such an influence on the life of Jesus and was in some way part of that bigger picture of salvation. But today, the spotlight moves from Joseph to Jesus. From the Joseph of the Old Testament to Jesus. From the Joseph of Nazareth to Jesus. The spotlight moves entirely to Jesus. Because as we saw in the Nativity video, no one can take the place of baby Jesus. That is the person who is the key. In the words written by Stuart Townend that we're about to sing... Maybe this is a clue to the band to come up on the stage. Joy has dawned upon the world, promised from creation. God's salvation now unfurled. Hope for every nation, not with fanfares from above, not with scenes of glory, but a humble gift of love. Jesus, born of Mary. Let's keep our focus on Jesus as we continue in our worship this morning. Uh, We've got a, a wonderful time to follow through as we sing, as we prepare for communion, as we share in bread and wine. Keep that focus upon Jesus Christ.